right. Well, hey, everybody, it's Grim Green from GrimGreen.com back here today. I want to give a very warm welcome to my new subscribers. So about two years ago, I uploaded a video called Taking the Next Vaping Step, which was talking about going from SIGA-like devices up into bigger ego-sized devices, how to do that, what to look for. And then I made a follow-up video to that called Taking the Next Vaping Step Volume 2, which was talking about going from ego-sized devices into bigger, more regulated mod size style devices. Um, those videos proved to be uh, quite helpful for a lot of people. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna try to collect my thoughts. What we're gonna do is taking the next step, volume thrice, moving from mods, moving into mechanical mods and rebuildable atomizers. What to look for, what you need to know, what supplies you'll need for rebuilding, what batteries you'll need, etc., etc. And obviously, I can't cover every single possible combination of rebuildable atomizer and mech mod that exists because quite frankly there are hundreds and hundreds of different mech mods out there hundreds and hundreds of different rebuildable atomizers out there there's authentic mods that have a higher asking price there's clone mods that have a lower asking price same thing goes for atomizers there's really expensive atomizers that i love there's really cheaper atomizers that are still really good and then there's even clones of atomizers that get even cheaper and cheaper so what we're gonna do is talk about mech mods first. So what is a mech mod? Well, a mech mod stands for mechanical mod, which basically means it's a tube with two contacts. And when you press the button, it connects those two contacts and unloads the battery into your atomizer. You're getting the unregulated, meaning it's not going through any wires or chips. There's no DNA 30s in there. There's no you know, regulated protection or anything in there to adjust it up or down. It's just the load of the battery. Battery. That's what I mean by unregulated. You're just getting the load off the battery right off the charger. If you have a good battery, you're probably going to be getting around 4.2 to 4.1 volts. And depending on the battery that you're using, that will drop down usually to around 3.7, 3.6 volts over the life of the battery, which is why a lot of people, when they're building these coils, They'll use a freshly charged battery and get a really much more intense hit. And then when they start to notice that that power is dropping off over the life of the battery, they'll either just switch it out to a new battery or they'll keep using it. I tend to keep using it. But the most, you know, hardcore hobbyist type of people will swap out the battery to a brand new freshly charged battery so they can get that so they can get that good hit i have a couple of mech mods here that i'm going to talk about and there's a couple of different styles of mech mods that exist first up are telescoping mech mods and telescoping means that they telescope up and then they telescope down to accommodate a different uh, variety of batteries so the most commonly used battery for mech mods is an 18650, and you're gonna need good batteries with a high amp limit. The higher amp limit you have on your battery, the better. This is a Sony VTC4, which is pretty, pardon me, which is pretty tried and true as far as a good, durable, solid, reliable battery. And I'll have links in the description to literally everything that I'm talking about, including batteries, some of the mech mods I cover, and some of the rebuildable atomizers I cover. But this right here is a telescoping mech mod. This is the Titan by VHO, and of course I'll have a link in the description for a very long time up to and including right now. This is one of my absolute absolute favorite mechanical mods i just like using it i think it works good i think it looks cool and it's super easy to adjust there's no fiddling there's no nothing like that i'm going to take my atomizer i'm going to put it on this top cap this top cap has a adjustable floating center pin which means that the center contact is going to go up and down depending on how deep your atomizer goes into it so this is a tobe atomizer i'm just going to put it on here like that I'm going to take my mech mod and I'm going to telescope it out just a little bit just so I have enough room to fit the battery and everything I need in there. Battery goes in. There's plenty of space in there. So what you do is you attach this just like that and then with a telescoping mod you can just snug it up. You telescope this up, telescope this up. Oh, right there that is snug. So now you know that the atomizer is making a good connection with the top top is making a good connection with the battery and the battery is going to make a good connection with the switch on the bottom and it's going to fire it's 
Now what I have in here is a 0 0.2 ohm build, which I will link in the description to vapecalc.com. Vapecalc.com is basically, uh, well, it's basically one of the greatest things, calc.com. Um, you can figure out your resistance and the watts and amps you will need. So if I say that this is 0 0.2 ohms, and let's say I'm being generous and getting 4.1 volts from this battery here, that's 85 watts at 20 amps. So that is on the upper end of what this battery is basically capable of. The Sony VTC4 can certainly handle that, but it's on the upper end of what that can handle. So what I can do, what I also have the option to do is uh, put a different battery in here. I want to be safer. I don't want to be on the upper end limit of a battery. So I'm going to grab this battery right here. This is a vamped 18650 40 amp battery. So that is well within the safety specifications of this battery. And that's what I'm going to feel comfortable using in this mod with this particular build. The, the lower ohms you go, okay? And people are building low ohms. Uh, once upon a time, 1.5 ohms was the lowest that you could get an atomizer in. And now that you can rebuild them, you can go well below that. You can go to 1 ohm, you can go to half an ohm, you can go to 0 0.2, 0 0.18 if you're feeling dangerous. But best make sure that you have a really good battery in there. This battery now has a 40 amp limit on it, so I know I'm well within the safety specifications of this battery. Really good, really nice performance. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this exact atomizer and this exact battery, and I'm gonna put it in a bit of a different style mod. Um, this is more of a budget style mod. The Titan, even though it's one of my favorites, it's a bit on the pricey end, it's about $170. These are still being made in all sorts of colors. They come in the Iron Man where you can get gold and red. VHO is a is a good company. They make good quality products. I'll have a link in the description to my original review of this particular Mac mod, and it's remained one of my favorites. Now, if we're looking at price, you can go with this. See this right here? This is the Beacon Mac mod from beyondvape.com. They sell these for about 65 bucks. It's a telescoping Mac mod, and it works kind of the same way, except it doesn't have a floating center pin. It has a, an adjustable center pin. So what you do, I'm going to take the same atomizer. I'm going to attach it on here. I'm going to clean up my juice that's getting everywhere. And I'm going to screw this bottom part up until it touches the bottom of that atomizer. Oh, it's right there. I'm going to take the same Sony or Sony vamped battery. I'm going to screw this on here. And then what you do is you just telescope these parts. Oh, and they're nice and snug right there. So now I know that, once again, this is making a good connection to the, to the center post. The center post is making a good connection with the battery. The battery is going to make a good connection with the switch. And yes, it will vape. It's a very, very good, very, very nice vape. It hits well, and like I said, this is more of a budget style mod. So obviously, shop around. You can look at things like, does it telescope? What kind of contacts does it have? Some metals are you know, more conductive than others. Copper contacts are kind of like the standard. Everybody wants copper contacts, but there's silver plated contacts, there's brass contacts, and they all conduct slightly differently. Again, for the super hardcore people, they notice things like voltage drop, like uh, how hard a mech mod hits. This beacon hits nice. It's got good contacts in it. It's a cheaper mod. It's only 65 bucks for a non-clone mod. I think the beacon, along with the other mod that Beyond Vape sells, the Sage, is uh, is a good deal. I mean, it's a screaming deal. It's a nice, nice deal for a nice, nice mech mod. Real quick, Beyond Vape also sells the, uh, the Neptune. And the Neptune now comes, the Neptune was once a hybrid. So if we're going to talk about hybrids real fast, hybrids mean that the atomizer connects directly to the battery. That means there's no 510 top cap on top. It means that it comes with a rebuildable atomizer that is already 
attach it screws right into the mod and it touches the battery it reduces that voltage drop that some people are talking about that you might notice if you have weird contacts or if there's anything in between your atomizer and your and your battery this eliminates that battery connects directly to the atomizer so the neptune was once a hybrid and it still is a hybrid i guess but they sell a 510 top cap for it so the hybrid is $150 and they sell it with this, with a 510 top cap that has a very adjustable sort of 510 connection on there. Once again, I'm gonna take my same atomizer, this Tobe, I'm gonna connect it here. I'm gonna screw this up so it's touching the bottom. You kinda have to do this every time with most mech mods. I'm gonna take that same vamped 40 amp battery. I'm gonna put it in there. I'm going to adjust this pin to take up for the battery rattle. <laughs> I'm going to take, wow, this is, uh, I'm going to take this pin off. Wow. This, this takes up a lot more space than I thought it would. You're going to have to fiddle sometimes with mech mods. Holy crap. Okay. No, it's going in. It's going in. It's all good. It's all good. No big deal. Now I know that it's not gonna fire. I don't know why that's not firing. See, fiddling. Fiddling with mech mods. Um, one thing to keep in mind with mech mods is you kinda have to perform maintenance on them every once in a while. You gotta make sure your contacts are clean. You gotta make sure your threads are clean. You want them to be as conductive as humanly possible. Is that connecting? Nope, totally not connecting. And there's certain atomizers. Maybe this tobe just isn't meant. Is that connecting? So I had to, had to fiddle with that center pin to make sure that it was low enough to touch the battery and that it was go, it was high enough to make a connection with this atomizer. Eventually, yeah, absolutely, got working. So you can go to Beyond Vape, you can look at the Neptune, you can look at the 510 top cap. I really like this mod, it hits well and it's nice and clean looking. And that's what I look for in a mech mod is nice, nice clean straight lines. And there's, like I said, there's so many different mech mods out there. You can kind of think about, do you want it to be really clean looking do you want it to have stuff do you want it to look like the v3 tronics which is crazy with crazy engravings you know do you want it to be 22 millimeters like this and have a flush look with your atomizer do you want it to be wider maybe like the beacon and have a non-flush i mean it'll be flush but it'll be wider you can kind of customize how you want it to look think about how much money you can spend etc etc Hitting good, hitting nice. So the last, I got two more mech mods that I wanted to talk about, and these are getting into the higher end mech mods. So there's mech mods out there that are quite expensive. They go in upwards of two hundred dollars for for a mech mod, which is ah, uh, it's a thing. Everybody has a vape budget. Everybody has their vape budget hands, and everybody knows exactly how much they they have the uh, you know the ability to spend on any particular device or mod. Um, one of my favorite mods of all time is the shotgun. I'm just a big fan. Emit Vapor, they make good stuff. This is the shotgun mod. So this is getting up into the more expensive sort of, uh, sort of mods. Where are you, shotgun? Oh gosh, did I close this tab? Let's head over to emitvapor.com. I'll post a link in the description, like I said, to everything that I can possibly talk about. But they sell the shotgun mod, and it's very, very foolproof, meaning that there's nothing really to adjust on the inside. You attach your atomizer. Okay, Tobe. You attach your atomizer. You have your battery on the inside. This is the sub-ohm cell. Uh, I've seen these for sale on Kidney Puncher, and I'll have a link in the description. These are a 40-amp battery, 35-amp battery as well. Remember, the higher amps on your battery, the better. Battery goes in. This just screws on top, and that's it. There's no, uh, 
There's no adjusting to do. It's spring-loaded on the bottom. You can adjust your throw, and it's just going to hit every single time. Easily, easily one of my absolute favorite mech mods. And so what I'm going to do now is talk about the last mech mod. Uh, I talked about these recently in a vlog, but this is the Panzer. This is one of those mech mods that's kind of been around. It's very, very tried and true. And I'm going to hook a Mutation X atomizer on there. I'm going to put my vamped 40 amp battery on the inside. I'm going to adjust this little pin to take up the space for the battery so your battery doesn't rattle in there. Let's see if I eyeballed it correctly. Ooh, I might have eyeballed it correctly. Holy crap, I eyeballed it correctly. This is the Panzer. Now these get to be uh, a little bit more expensive. And I don't... Why don't I have a link for these either? Oh my gosh. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Uh, be vape happy. Let's go to that link. Um... So this is the Panzer, and uh, it's it's an expensive mech mod. This is almost a two hundred dollar mech mod. It's made very very well. It's made in the Philippines. It's got a nice locking feature. It's got a very nice switch. This is a very very nice mech mod, and it asks for a very very high price, one hundred ninety seven dollars. So, like I said before, vape budget hands. It's a thing. You're gonna need to decide what what you can spend on a mech mod more importantly than that you need to get good batteries and i'll post links in the description to where you can get sony vtc4 batteries which are good and tried and true the purple e fest uh, batteries that are 20 amps as well the sub ohm cells which are 35 amps and those vamped 2000 ma 18650 40 amp batteries as well so now that we've talked about mech mods, let's talk about atomizers. Now, I'm hoping that this video doesn't run too, too long. Please hang in there with me. There's a lot of rebuildable atomizers out there that ask a very, very high price, and there's some that ask a very, very low price. I'm using this Mutation X right now, which is a highly, highly decent rebuildable atomizer. What I want to do right now before we talk too much about rebuildable atomizers is we're going to go up close, and I'm just going to build a dual coil on here. I'm going to wick it with some organic Japanese cotton and then we're going to uh, we're gonna vape it okay well I'm just using this mutation X rebuildable atomizer as an example and I'm not saying that all rebuildable atomizers are created the same way but for the most part they're kind of created the same way what you're gonna have for the most part is a deck with two three or four holes to build your atomizer on center one and then two negative leads on the side and then you're going to have a top cap and the top cap has airflow holes in it and you always want to line up those airflow holes with the coil that you're building on the inside and in this case of the mutation x those airflow holes are adjustable with these sort of tangs on there you can kind of see now they're all open now some of them are closed now just that one on the bottom is open so they don't all have adjustable airflow but some of them do have adjustable airflow one of my favorite ones like the tugboat has no adjustable airflow it just has set holes the other one that i was talking about earlier the igo w5 if you're not using the crest cap on there it does just have fixed airflow holes and so you kind of adjust the way that you draw based on those airflow holes and then when you find one with adjustable airflow you can go well I want this wide open I want as much airflow as possible I want less flavor more vapor or you alternatively you cut this down to maybe just one hole maybe you like a stiffer airflow maybe you want more flavor and a little bit less vapor so there's a lot of rebuildable atomizers out there that have adjustable airflow and have uh, fixed airflow as well but that's the basic components of any rebuildable atomizer is the deck and the top cap sometimes the top cap is in three parts like this or like the tobe or like the Vulcan and sometimes it's in two parts like the uh, tugboat rebuildable atomizer or the what else is out there the igo w5 rebuildable atomizer there's a lot of rebuildable atomizers out there that are just two parts which meaning you'll get a cap with a place to put your drip tip and then two airflow holes usually cut into it so what i'm going to do on this deck right now is i'm just going to build a quick and dirty dual coil and if anybody tells you that it takes some sort of special magical skills to build a coil, you can chop them in the throat for being an idiot because it really doesn't take anything more than practice. What you're going to need is Canthal, 
which I happen to have here. This is 24 gauge. Some sort of way to check your ohms, which I have here. Some mods with like DNA 30 mods will be able to check your ohms. A screwdriver to wrap your coil around. This is a two millimeter uh, Phillips head screwdriver. And this is kind of just my go-to. I always just build on this because I know that I can put X amount of wraps around this and it will end up at a certain ohm range that I'm looking for. You're gonna need tweezers as well. These are ceramic tweezers that you can use to pinch said coils while they're heating up. You can also use uh, regular regular tweezers like this uh, for adjusting, but don't fire the coil uh, if, these are, if these are touching it in any capacity. And then you're gonna need a wick. And I like cotton, and I'll put a link in the description, obviously, to where you can buy this, Japanese organic cotton. People can use it in different ways. I like leaving it, uh, I like leaving it whole. Some people separate it like this and you can get much more wick out of it. I end up just leaving it uh, as one giant pad. The way that the texture runs in this, it runs you know, uh, vertically like this or horizontally or, or however you're looking at it, but when you have this in, it will wick the juice to your coil much better than if you were just using a wad of cotton or like a cotton ball. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do just a quick and dirty dual coil like I said. I'm gonna get some canthal off of here and be careful with your canthal spools because this goes, uh, if you're not careful, it'll just, uh, it'll just go everywhere. So you kinda have to hold it, be careful. I'm gonna get my wire clippers, but you can use scissors if you so desire. I'm gonna cut a length of canthal off. I'm gonna take my extra and I'm gonna tuck it back under here so that it doesn't uh, so that it doesn't go crazy and de-spool on me. So I just have a big old wad of canthal here, big old length of canthal, and I'm gonna basically cut it in half. So now I have, ooh, look at that, two pieces of canthal wire, and you're gonna use this to build your coil. So, what device do I want to use this Mutation X on? How low do I want to go? Well, I think I want to throw this on a mech mod because that's what we're talking about is mech mods. So I'm going to do six wraps of 24 gauge canthal around a two millimeter screwdriver and we'll see where that ends up. So what I do is screwdriver goes in my hand, wire goes under my finger, and then I just wrap underneath. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that looks just uh, just ugly as hell. Kind of looks like a coil. They're kind of all sort of spaced out a little bit. When you first start building, it's not super crucial to build your coil and make it look absolutely perfect while it's stuck on your screwdriver because we can attach this to the atomizer and we can make it look much, much, much more pretty. So that's one. So what I always like to do is I have one lead that's shorter than the other one. It just makes it much easier. So I'm going to cut this one just a touch shorter than that other one. See how I have one long one and one short one now? So we are going to duplicate this. We're going to make another six wrap of 24 gauge canthal. So because I was able to build a little bit closer to my face on that one off camera, I was able to get the coils just a little bit closer and with some practice, you'll be able to wrap coils so quickly and so tightly you won't even, it'll just be second nature to you. You won't even think about it. But those turned out a little bit prettier looking than compared to these. But it doesn't much matter because when we attach them, what we're going to do is heat them up and pinch them so that they're nice and tight, nice and tight together so you get a nice, smooth, even surface area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one first. I'm going to take my Mutation X atomizer right here and the reason that I split these into long and short is so I can put one in the center and then one in the side. Is this on camera? One in the center, one on the side. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, these have to be open all the way. I kept running into the screw there. That's the problem. So make sure that your holes on your atomizer posts are nice and wide open. So this one's going to go in the center. This one's going to go in the side. Just like that. You see how that happened? What I do is I just set my finger here. I'm going to hold the coil right where it needs to be, basically. And then I'm going to take my screwdriver, which is somewhere, and I'm going to tighten down this one. 
and you just want to make it tight enough to hold the wire. On a lot of these atomizers, if you keep screwing it down and keep screwing it down, it's going to eventually clip your wires. So I just go uh, 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 tight just like that. It's holding my wire in there really well. And uh, I take this center one, kind of like this, and I pull it off to the side. And I pull this one off to the side as well, so that when we go on this side and we attach the other coil, there's, uh, there's no other wires getting in the way. There's no other wires that are going to get in your way. So we can do that right now, actually. I'm going to take this one. Same thing. The longer, po longer, longer one goes first. So this one happens to be on this side. Shorter one goes on this side should go right in just like that. You see how that happened? And what you want to avoid, again, I'm just gonna put my finger here and I'm gonna tighten these down. And now that this one's tightened down, I can, I can tighten down the center one as well. Ooh, 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 just make it tight. Just make it tight enough to not clip your wire. Same with the center one. Just go tight, just make it snug. Don't make it snow so snug uh, 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 that it clips your wire. I hate it. I hate, hate, hate having my wires clipped by screws on a rebuildable atomizer deck. So that's in there. I mean, that is basically that is basically your coil. All of these are nice and snug. And what you want to watch out for are these center ones. You don't want your center wires affecting, you know, or touching your coil in any way. So we're going to clip these off all nice and flush-like. And that's when these clippers are really... Uh, really going to come in handy. So you get right here, right next to it. That's flying somewhere in the room right now. See how it's cut off nice and clean. Same thing over here. Just cut it off nice and clean. Same thing over here. You kind of got to get in there though. You got to get in there with your clippers. Cut this one nice and clean. That one flew right at my face, but don't clip your coils. I've done that in the past and it's a bad scene, man. Get in there clip. Look at that. It's looking more and more like a coil every day. And so what I like to do sometimes is there's going to be a little bit left over here. You either uh, push this up or push this down out of the way. You can't get super, super close to that center post just because there's another coil in the way. But you want to kind of want to get this little excess right here. You see this little, this little tiny bit of excess wire right here? You want to get that kind of out of the way. You want that to go up or down or to the side. Just get it out of the way. Just get it out of the way. Look at that. So you have coils. Let's attach this to a mech mod or let's check the ohms first before we attach it to a mech mod. I have a feeling, let's see, six wraps. Oh, this is going to be a little bit under 0 0.2 ohms. Yep, or right at uh, 0 0.27 ohms. This is going to end up at uh, around 0 0.27 ohms, so that's fun. Um, we'll check the resistance after we do some pinching and firing of the atomizer. Uh, let me grab a mod and a good battery real quick. All right, so what I'm going to do is get my sub-ohm cell battery. I'm going to put it in this shotgun mechanical mod from Emit Vapor, obviously one of my favorite things. Uh, there's not a whole lot to adjust here, so all I really have to do is screw this Mutation X down on here, and I know that it's, uh, I know that it's going to make a good connection, and I know that it's going gonna, it's gonna to fire. What is going on? Why don't you like screwing down on here, you silly machine? See, the Mutation X has that long center post as well. I wonder if that can be adjusted in any way. Nope, it can't. Okay, well, what are you going to do? You have to roll with the punches. So, this is just going to get screwed down on here, just like that. Center pin goes up. This goes adjusted on here. Oh, and it's all good and adjusted, and I know that that's going to fire. So, what I'm going to do is pulse. I'm going to pulse these coils. I'm just going to start pressing the button, getting them heated up a little bit. You can see one's firing a little bit hotter than the other, but that will all get taken care of with fiddling and adjustments. Basically, you want to get these hot, get these hot. That one's a little bit farther away than the other one. So what I'm going to do is just uh, do some fiddling here. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get this together. I'm going to straighten this one out because it's it's a little bit wonky. It's a little bit wonky and at a weird angle. So I'm going to straighten this one out. Might be able to pull it out a little bit. 
kind of center it a little bit more where it needs to go. I'm going to continue to pulse, continue to pulse these coils. Now they're heating up a little bit more evenly. And what I do is after I, after I pulse the coils a little bit, you can get in there with your tweezers. This is, uh, this is not in focus. Why do I think that this was in focus? You can get in there with your tweezers and kind of do one of these jobbers. Just pinch it together. If you have ceramic tweezers, you pulse it while it's pinched. Same thing over here. We're going to pinch it. We're going to pulse it. We're going to continue to pinch and pulse and pinch and pulse and get these all straight and just beautiful looking, much better looking coils. They're heating up very, very evenly right now. See that? Do you see how they just, every time you press the button, they'll heat up evenly from the center to the outside, center to the outside. Really good. So let's, uh, I don't want to burn my fingers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off. I'm going to put it back on my ohm reader, and I'm going to see what the final uh, verdict was as far as ohms go. 0.26, not much changed. Those are the coils, 0.26. So what we're going to do now is we are going to wick them. And I'll wick one side so you can see it being wicked. And then, uh, you know, you just uh, you basically do a repeat of the, your wicking on the other side. And here's what I like to do. So let me, uh, let me get this in focus so I can set it down here. Now it's going to have to be up here. It's going to just have to be up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get... You can kind of eyeball it. You can kind of see how wide those coils are and how much cotton you'll need for the inside. So you can kind of see, eh, that's what they look like. So I'm going to take my cotton here and I'm going to cut off maybe like uh, that much. You see that? You see how I just kind of cut a bunch of it off? And then I take, all you need to do is take one side and you roll it. You just roll the tip just roll it just roll the tip up like that and then you go like this just like that right so it sticks in and then you can kind of pull the rest of it through just like that see that and then what you're going to end up doing is cutting these ends off so they're nice and even just like that and now that that side has a wick through it and which what I like to do is I just take some tweezers I grab it like this I kind of grab it and fold it and press it underneath the coil just like that see how that happened you see that happening right there and I've done this in a lot 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 of videos but I always do the jumpy cut shit and I, uh, I never show it all the way so yeah, that's one side that's wicked right there. You see the wick is down there. It's not too tight through the center. What you want to avoid is using too much cotton and making it constrict right there over the coil. You want the juice to kind of flow freely to that coil. I'm going to quick do this to the other side as well. Look at that. So we got some pretty decent looking coils there and they're all wicked up. So then what you're going to do is take whatever juice that you want to use that you happen to be vaping and just douse the coils and cotton and let it soak in. Do you see it just soaking in there? Put some in the middle. Let it soak. Make sure the cotton is make sure the cotton is wet. You want to make you want to get all your cotton wet without getting too drippy, too leaky everywhere. It should absorb most of this juice. Do you see how it's getting all nice and juicy now? See how there's this dry spot over here? Boom. Just put a little juice. Just put a little juice. Just put a little juice just put a little juice just like that and that's uh that's rad sauce so i'm going to close this up i'm going to put this back on my mech mod and uh for anyone wondering this is just the head of an old bam mod and uh ed the green uh, gave me a gutted bam head and i just use it as like a deck for building in it and it happens to work uh well, it happens to work really, really well. So this is going to go back on the shotgun. It's going to go back on the mech mod that I want to use it on. And now when I press the fire button, those are all juiced up. They should just fire and create vapors. Look at that. Just 
vapor creation happening. So what I'm going to do with this mutation X head with mutation X top cap is I'm going to I'm going to shut it down to like there. I don't know why that's just where I feel like I want to use it. In fact, I'm going to close those off completely and I'm just going to use these bottom three holes right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up those bottom three holes with the coils. And if your coils at the same size side on either side, then you can just line up one. I'm going to line this up just like that. And now we have a completely built atomizer. We'll get a drip tip on there. And uh, yeah, quick and dirty, dual coil build. It's much easier than people let on. Doesn't take any sort of witchcraft or sorcery. All it takes is a little bit of practice and you can build some nice, good performing coils on there. So yeah, this Mutation X came out to 0 0.25, 0 0.26 ohms, which on, you know, that sub-ohm cell in this Panzer is hitting, uh, it's hitting really well. Hitting really well, hitting really nice. Um, I'm not a huge, huge fan of the Mutation X. It's a decent, highly decent atomizer. I do like the adjustable airflow on it. I like to turn it down to just three holes open because that's kind of where I like it. But as you saw, it's a nice, easy deck to build on, nice deep juice well. The great thing about this atomizer is it's only $25. There are some atomizers out there that I have personally used and reviewed that are upwards of over $100. I just did one last week that was $90. I have a couple of tugboats, which are some of my favorite atomizers of all time. Those go for $85, but there are less expensive options out there, and the Mutation X is one of them. It's a really good performer, and it's only $25. Bucks. Another inexpensive atomizer that I have that I really, really like is the Igo W5, which is as asking price of around $30, bucks. and I'll post, again, a links in the description to where you can look at them or check them out. The one thing that's great about the Igo W5 is the diameter of it. They make top caps. And I'll post a link in the description once again to my Igo W5 review where I used the, uh, what the crap is that top cap called? There's a top cap, the Crest top cap on raw vapes. It's called the Halo, but it has a bit bigger airflow. It's about the same price uh, as, as the Igo W5. Additionally, I love the Igo W5 with the crest cap. It's a great deck to build on. It's a great airflow. Um, there is also the most inexpensive atomizer that I've ever seen is the Caterpillar. And I have a, a video for it, which I'll post a link to in the description. But the Caterpillar atomizer, available from a lot of different vendors, is only $13. So realistically, you could spend 60 bucks on the Beacon, spend 20 bucks on batteries, and spend $13 on an atomizer, and you'll basically be good. What you will need additionally is building materials. You'll need canthal. And the way that canthal works is the lower the grade, lower the grade, rephrase, the lower the gauge of canthal, the lower ohms you will build. The higher the gauge of canthal, the higher the build ohms you will build. So on my K-Fun, where I want something like two ohms, I use 29 gauge canthal to build in that, and that will get me higher ohms. On drippers, when I want to go into the sub ohm territory, when I want a 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 ohm, I use 24 gauge canthal, and that will get me lower ohms. The cotton that I use and swear by is the Japanese organic cotton, and I'll post a link in the description. It's called Kogendo Organic Cotton, and it's fantastic. It comes in sheets. You just snip it how you saw in the up close. You roll it. You press it. It goes in. It wicks really well, and it's a nice, clean flavor. Do not, 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 not boil your cotton. Just don't do it. It actually makes it worse. Unless you're using distilled water, do not boil your cotton. Just open your cotton, cut your cotton, and wick with your cotton. And of course, links for everything that I just talked about are going to be in the description to this video, uh, including the Igo W5. I'll post a link to the tugboat because that's absolutely one of my favorite, favorite atomizers. I just like building on it and I love the airflow on it. I'll post a link in the description for the vape calc as well as the Kogendo organic uh, Japanese cotton. 
I think that covers everything that I wanted to talk about. Basically, it's not it doesn't cost a lot of money to get into mech mods and rebuildable atomizers, and it is a very, very fun and satisfying vape experience. One thing that I had to do when I moved to rebuildable atomizers was lower my nicotine. Whenever I use an RBA or an RDA, which stands for rebuildable dripping atomizer or rebuildable atomizer, I had to drop my nick level down to about six, three or six. Um, in a K-Fun, I still use 12. I still use 18 sometimes actually in a K-Fun, but when I'm dripping, knock that nick level down because it's a very sort of intense sensation. So use your vape budget hands. Look at some mods. Look at some atomizers. One thing that you do not, not, not want to cheap out on is batteries. Good batteries are going to be a little bit pricier, but they are well worth it. They are better performers and they will keep you much, much safer. And I don't mean to sound so mm -mm -mm with my finger, but good batteries are the one place that you do not want to cheap out on. You want to buy a $13 atomizer? Absolutely. You want to buy a $30 mech mod clone? Absolutely. Don't cheap out on your batteries because your batteries are what power your atomizers and you can't push them beyond their limits. I don't know if you've ever seen a battery venting video, but it's not pretty, it's not good, and it's quite dangerous. So high amp limit batteries, don't cheap out on the batteries. That's what I got. This video is way too long. I hope it was helpful. I hope it gave you an idea of what to expect and what to look for when moving from into mech mods and rebuildable dripping atomizers. The way that you vape is also slightly different. It's more of a lung thing than a mouth to lung thing. You just breathe in like you're breathing and uh, you'll get a nice big plume of vapor. It's a lot of fun. I'm not a huge fan of like cloud competitions and who has the biggest clouds or the sickest builds. It's not really my thing. I vape to not smoke cigarettes and this is a very, very satisfying way for me and a fun way for me to not have to uh, to not have to smoke cigarettes. But that's what I got. Links to literally everything I talked about will be in the description to this video. Hope that was helpful. And uh, yes, that's what I got for today. So as always, let's keep on vaping.